Brought to you by ConnectJS, Atlanta's premier JavaScript conference. Sponsored in part by FeatherDirect. Need a mobile app? Contact us for your custom mobile solution.
alloy widgets to create new models. Um, there's lots of widgets that out there that are pretty good, but it's not easy to extend. And if you use the CLI, you're free to chain and, and adapt and extend any part of the whole process that you're uh, working on. So that's what I like about CLI. So if we want to switch from using Studio to using CLI only, what do we need? So what some of the stuff that Titanium Studio provides for us that we need to find an alternative for is of course, first of all, the editor. Um, we need some way to do rapid application development. Uh, if you're using Accelerator Studio, you have Live View, which is it, 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 it brings you enormous amounts of time every day if you can just do a small change, just like uh, Jeff Haney was demonstrating this morning using Triple. You can just hit save and see the change immediately and not have to wait for 30 seconds for your app to be rebuilt. Um, so that's definitely something that we want as well on the CLI. Uh, you have dependency management, you're using modules, widgets, you need some way to use that. Um, you want debugging, testing, and then of course building a module, deploying it to, uh, to the App Store, to installer, to test fly the ribbons that you use to distribute your yeah, EDS. And you need coffee. You need time to enjoy, have a coffee, you train. You want to save time. In the end, that's what is um, the main reason you want to switch to CLI. So let's go through all of these and see how we can find alternatives as we're switching, moving away from Studio and using the CLI. So for the editor, if you look at Studio, we have syntax highlighting, we have code completion, uh, the ASHint is included, auto formatting of files, you can also related files. If you're working in a controller of an alloy project, you can uh, use the shortcut to open the XML and TSS is related to it. You have Git integration, you have a build system. So we need to find an alternative for all this kind of features that Studio offers for us as it comes to the editor. And a very popular alternative, of course, is Sublime. So if you decide to use Sublime, or maybe you're already using Sublime for other projects that you do, um, these are some of the um, tools out there, the packages out there, um, that you can use to make Sublime more of a, a titanium customized uh, environment to work in. <clears throat> First of all, of course, if you install Sublime, you want to get the package control plugin so you never have to manually install the plugin again. You can just do that um, from inside Sublime. And one of the earlier plugins out there for Titanium is uh, Matto's um, Sublime TI Build package. And it offers a build system, a code assist, and syntax highlighting for TSS. Um, at the moment, the build system doesn't work for 3.4. He's fixing that. The code completion is, it works, but it's kind of buggy. Uh, but the syntax highlighting for TSS is fine. And of course, there is JavaScript highlighting and XML highlighting is already um, included in Sublime by default, so you don't need that. Then there's <coughs> a very nice uh, um, app for the Mac out there. I don't know if you're already using it, Dash. It's excellent. It has offline documentation for tons of frameworks out there. You definitely need to check that out. And if you have Dash installed, you can also install the Dash doc package for Sublime. And then you can just use a shortcut and it will look up whatever is under your cursor in Dash. So they have um, very fast access to um, documentation of the functions that you're using at the moment, just like Studio. It shows the, um, the documentation for the function if you just hover over a, a function or a property or whatever. Um, so you can similar behavior in Sublime using this package. Then for formatting, I use uh, YAS format. And for YAS hint, you can use Sublime linter, which um, gives exactly the same features as you have in Studio. It just points out obvious errors in your JavaScript so you can correct them. Um, just last, uh, last day, um, and Joss has been writing a, uh, also a very nice plugin for, um, for Sublime, combined with the last um, URL, um, which offers uh, exactly what Studio does um, to open related files. If you're working in a controller or alloy, you can just um, 
<clears throat> you also want to have the TSS file and the XML file of the same controller. Uh, in the studio, you can use a shortcut to open these files. Well, uh, what just made is that as soon as you open uh, a controller, it will also open the TSS and the XML files in, uh, in the different parts of the editor that you can uh, split the screen up to. It's a very nice plugin. It's, it's, it's highly uh, beneficial for your productivity when working with LO projects. There are tons of other um, packages out there that you can use that are not specifically for titanium, like you have git diff, that easy diff, that allows you to easily um, compare different files. You have packages that, that bring in git um, features into Sublime. So it's a very rich ecosystem of a lot of packages that are um, often focused on JavaScript, but work just as well for titanium. So another alternative that was um, trending early this year was Atom. Is any of you using Atom at the moment? A little bit. Okay. I, did, I did check it out when they had the first public release, but I found it um, slow. Uh, and I, what I understood is that they're now, in their current release cycles, they're focusing on getting that performance right, because obviously they take they use all the advantages of having an editor that is written in JavaScript. Well, actually, it's called script, but okay, JavaScript. So it's very hackable, but because of that, they have to deal with all the performance issues, of course. Um, there are some packages out there that you can use. You have uh, language TSS for the TSS syntax highlighting. You have a generator that um, can create alloy controllers, widgets, and stuff like that. You have shortcuts. Um, for exactly the same, uh, what just is in Sublime and the related files. And there's a build system that allows you to not use the CLI, but just do quick builds to the simulator. And then lastly, um, WebStorm, also a highly popular uh, editor, very powerful, um, but also very fast. And Dave Townsend did uh, an excellent blog on um, explaining how you can uh, turn the JS doc uh, documentation that is available for Titanium into a file that WebStorm can read. So you have code completion, code assist, all that um, in WebStorm. So any questions about the editor part? Feel free to. Okay. So next, um, rapid application development. We don't want to wait for builds. I mean, that has been the most frustrating part of doing app development in Titanium or any other language is waiting for that app to compile. Um, so there's ways to speed it up immensely. And when you're using Accelerator Studio, uh, you can use Live View, which is built in. You can just toggle a, a button, and then the app will compile just as normal. Um, but whenever you do a change and you hit Save, immediately the app restarts and um, shows that change. So this is taken from a video, so if you get an idea how it works, will just boot up an app and you can just change the theme of this other project to a different color. We're either switching to red. Hit save and in the console you'll see <coughs> that it will pick up the change and then compile the whole project again and hot reload the code. So the, the app itself, only the other project is compiled and the JavaScript is sent directly to the app. So there's no recompiling of the actual uh, Xcode project. And the good thing is, LiveView is also available on CLI. Um, so if you're using the CLI, you just add that slash LiveView and it will work just the same in the console. You all the console logs of your device works perfectly. But of course, if you're not using the Accelerator Studio, there's um, and a community alternative as well, TI Shadow, which has been around even before like you. Um, it's an awesome module by uh, David Beckier. And the good thing about TI Shadow is that it's not only doing what LiveView does, uh, but it's also adding lots of other features. Uh, you can, um, LiveView creates a local server that your app connects to, but TI Shadow, you can also run that server remote. It can just ship your app to your clients, some kind of beta version, and it can connect to the server. And whenever you push an update, the client app will be updated. Um, you can also grab screen, screenshots remotely. Um, you can get their logs remotely. 
Um, you can run test suites in um, just mine or Mocha. Um, so it's it's very powerful and it's a lot more than just um, just doing what Lightroom does as well. So we'll see the app coming up. So you can just imagine how much time they'll save by using one of these tools. I mean, whenever I walk into a company that I do consultancy for and helping them make more efficient use of titanium, this is the first tool that I let them install. And I, I could just walk away then and just send my invoice because they'll, 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 they'll get return on the investment right away because this, this saves you minutes every day. I mean, it's hours. Okay, so that's for rapid development. Then for dependency management. In Studio, if you want to install a module, you can browse the marketplace from the dashboard. Just in one click, install a module. And if you have an open source module on GitHub or whatever, um, you can just go to the menu uh, or download the zip file, select it from the menu, and it will install the module in the project. So it's, it's very easy. Well, on the if you're not using Studio, you have to download that zip file from the marketplace or from GitHub, extract it, move it to the right location, and then uh, add it to the TF.xml, etc., etc. So it will be spending like 20 minutes to install a module instead of this one minute exercise. So, um, shameless self promotion, but I was frustrated by, it, uh, by that problem myself, so I thought there should be a better way, so I created Gitio, which is more than just uh, a dependency manager. It indexes all of the code that is on GitHub that has, um, has familiar patterns to modules and widgets, so it recognizes that it's a titanium module or widget. List them on the website, so you can browse them and see what's out there. And it has command line that allows you to uh, install those widgets and modules in your projects. It will download it for you um, and then add it to the project. And you can do it both ways. You can do Gitio install, you give it a module ID and it will download it and it will add the module to your tf.xml just like you can do in Studio. But you can also do it the other way around. You can add your dependencies in the tf.xml and your widget dependencies in the widget.json or the uh, config.json on your Hello project. And then just run Gitio install, much like you do with npm install. It will get all the dependency widgets and modules for you, install it, and you're done. And it has a nice feature you can do Gitio demo, and then the module ID will download the module, but also create a new project, insert the example script that is found in the module, um, and then run that. So you, it's an easy way to check out a new module. Another site um, which is very nice to check out is Titanium Controls. Um, Marcel um, did this and uh, it's very different from Gitio and the Marketplace. On Marketplace, yeah, you can submit your module or widget and Accelerator will do a review and then post it there. Uh, on Gitio, um, you have no influence on what Gitio presents. Gitio just indexes GitHub and will present all of it. Um, but Titanium Controls is really a manual, curated uh, directory of widgets and modules. And Marcel does a very well, very good job at uh, describing how they work, including screenshots. So it's a very nice place to find some of the uh, some of the best modules and widgets out there. And lastly, in this um, as it comes to this subject, I want to mention Titanium Fire, which um, is much like a browser file. And it allows you to write um, a titanium module like you would do. You can add uh, in titanium. You can use common JS modules. Um, you might have known you can also package these common JS modules as a titanium module, um, which has some advances because of this. Um, the code will be um, included in that module, so it's not readable anymore. So it's easier if you develop some kind of advanced library kind of thing or an SDK that you want other clients to use but not to uh, master the code. You can package it as a titanium common JS module 
and then just hand it out to people. Um, what the Tamify does is that you can write your project in uh, as a Node.js package, including dependencies to Node.js uh, libraries that are out there, and it will then turn all of these scripts and all dependencies into one big JavaScript file, and then package that as a titanium comment.js module. So it allows you to use some of the awesome libraries out there from Node.js to write your titanium comment.js modules. So next thing we want is debugging. In Studio, um, what I really miss when I switch to CLI is debugging. Just the only time to that fire up the in studio again was to check if there's an update and to do debug. And often I fired up the in studio and I first had to go through all of these updates because I hadn't been using it for two or three weeks. Um, and then I can finally go through debugging and it's it's really it's really a pleasure to, to debug uh, an issue like this because you can just it will just break whenever there's an exception, you can see what variables are there and uh, Right away, you see what the error is. You can step, step through the code. So this is something that I, I want to very much for the CLI as well. Um, and fortunately, uh, Oliver uh, gave us TI Inspector, which is a very smart setup. It actually plugs in directly to Titanium's debugger um, and then provides uh, a piece of Node.js middleware that turns that information into a format that is readable by Chrome developer tools. So you can actually use Chrome developer tools as a uh, front end for viewing the debugging information from Titanium. So as we're going to see, um, you can easily just get it from NPM. By the way, this is iOS only. It doesn't work in Android because for Android, um, Titanium does a trick to um, whenever you do a debug build, it, it makes a change to the actual Titanium SDK to get the information out of the app. Um, but for Android, you could use Node Inspector very well um, in the same way. So you, as you can see, just like you're used to using Chrome developer tools, you can just step through code, inspect variables, everything you can in Studio, you can do with the TI inspector. It's actually the same. So whenever I run into a bug, uh, I, I only do cross-platform apps, so I always have an Android and an iOS app. So I just debug an iOS, and then whatever is left in Android, I can still use Studio if I want to. So when it comes to testing, automated testing is also a very hot topic. Um, I remember um, most of the talks in New York, uh, Jack of New York, were all about automation, automated testing. In India, it was a huge topic. Um, we obviously want to spend less time testing our stuff and doing the regression tests. So we're trying to find ways to do that, uh, to automate that. And like I said, TI Shadow has built-in support. You can just have your specs in a separate folder. And whenever you do a new build with TI Shadow, it will run all of these specs um, and give you the results. So it's very nice that you can do it in Jasmine and Mocha. Um, Tony did a TI Mocha package that um, connects uh, Mocha to um, the uh, TI API.info uh, logger, so you can see the logs in your console. But the downside of TI Mocha is that you have to include your specs in the actual app. And that's something that most of the time you don't want to because you, you have, of course, you can use the run to move in the specs and move them out for production and stuff like that. But um, ideally, just like you have a TI Shadow, you would have your specs in a separate folder. So that's why that's one of the issues that TIO2 solves. That again, you can have your specs in a separate folder. It will just run, um, it will automatically create all these projects, run them for them, run all the specs, and then give you the end results. And, um, just like Jeff told there, it's now the main tool that Accelerate uses internally to do testing. And it's very nice. It doesn't only give you the results, but also all the timing of the different um, tests that you did. It's very nice. And then finally, you have GKLS. Um, 
which provides, tries to provide more of a, a natural language way of, of describing her tests, um, which is very nice. Uh, one of the features I look mostly forward to is doing touch interaction tests, which I understand is not available. It's, it's coming. It's coming, it's coming. Yeah. Looking forward if, to that if, one. If it's broken, blame me. I'm, 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 I'm the reason why it's broken. Come see me. Okay. <laughs> it works right now. Cool, cool, cool. So that's, that's one of the features of the Absolvia platform that I really like, the whole touch interaction test. So if, if we can have that. It's um, Yeah, that's cool. Is PyShadow ever going to do with the Yeah, I mean, it's just, it, it's the same libraries. Yeah, they can already use PyShadow. Yeah, you could, you could easily use it, yeah. The downside, of course, is that it all is in TI Shadow. So you have, you're working with the same uh, TS Shadow without getting into the inner workings of TS Shadow, but it's it's yeah, it's much like running that in net. So, so you you can have bugs that are only bugs in TI Shadow that work excellent in, on the device and the other way around. So uh, that will also affect your testing. Um, <coughs> Yeah, this is a small demo that, that Jeff had out there um, for t how TIO2 works. Um, as you can see, you can get the results in JSON and just on the command line, you get all the timings. It's very nice tool. It has been broken for a while, but I think it's fixed now, right, for 3.4? I think so. Cool. So the next is deployment, how to get your builds out there to the client, the test builds. Um, in Studio, it's, it's very simple, it's just no matter if you're deploying to and doing an ad hoc build or uh, an enterprise distribution or for the App Store or an accelerated platform, you have some integrated solutions um, pushing to enterprise distribution methods as well. Um, so it's very easy to walk you through all of the process. Um, and on the command line, of course, you have to um, go, th go through all these options, give your distribution name and your profile of your provisioning profile ID and the password of your key store and stuff like that. So it's more cumbersome than just going through this wizard. Um, and then you're, you have that IPA or APK file in your directory, but you still have to upload it to um, your client, to the installer or test file or whatever. So fortunately, you have some of the, um, some great books that you can use, like you have TI Installer, but also TI Test Flight, which works um, for the old test flights, which is currently still active, but probably will be taken down in the next month. Um, but this um, hook, this, this hooks into the Titanium CLI and allows you to just add an option, uh, a flag, uh, a dash dash installer flag and it will upload the build right after it's been done and let, allows you to add some release notes and then send it to an installer right away using um, the API key that you insert in your TF.xml. So whenever you want to do a new build, um, you can send it to installer in just one click and your testers will be notified. So it's very nice. Nobody uploaded it. Okay, so last um, part is about taking another step further because we want to, just like I said, we want to drink more coffee and do less uh, coding. So we want to automate everything we can, and that's possible when you use the CLI. I mean, when you're using Studio, you still have to do all these clicks. I mean, no matter how easy the wizards are, you still have to do them every time. And in the CLI, you can do way more automation than that. And some of the interesting areas are um, preprocessors, um, which once you have set them up, you can also get them to work in Studio, but I mostly use them from the CLI. And they're different out there. You have LTSS, which is not maintained anymore, but it's a, some kind of less. Um, it brings part of the less syntax into TSS, so it allows you to do variables import other uh, TSS files. Um, but one new one that is uh, really awesome is STSS with a SAS for TSS. And this is not just a shim, this is the actual SAS compiler running on uh, on your CSS input or SAS input and generating TSS output. 
and it's excellent. You can really write fully SAS compatible code. You can um, use mix-ins, variables, import stuff. Um, of course, there's no use in doing cascading because DSS doesn't support it. Um, but you can use you know, like background color. You can write it in background background dash color, and it will do everything for you. Can you write phone uh, dash family, and it will create that object in DSS. So you can really, if you have a design team or a front end team that is used to doing CSS, um, you don't need to have them to learn SDSS as well. You can just have them uh, style the app in SDSS and it will compile to TSS. So it's an excellent tool that we encourage you um, to use. And another one, also with David, is um, Jade. This is just a small blog explaining how you can use Jade. Um, to write your XML views, which of course saves a lot of keystrokes. And then there's some coffee script, uh, but uh, I think that's just for drink. <laughs> so this is a quick demo of how SDSS works. All the good stuff to an NPM these days. So you can use STSS in different ways. You can use the CLI to generate the TSS code uh, whenever you want. But you can also use it in your, your LOI with JMK or a hook to automatically do it each time you compile the LOI app. So as you can see, you can use mixings, imports, uh, variables, includes, whatever you want. And I hooked it into the LOI with JMK file. So it will automatically create the SDSS files. So this is, especially when you work in teams or when you do big apps, you don't want to repeat the same styles over and over again. And also, of course, you can use the app of TSS for common styles, but still, um, if you want to modularize the styling in a better way, um, SDSS is definitely a, a good way to go. And of course, in the end, if you, move, if you later decide to move away from using STSS, you still have to generate a TSS code. So it's just, uh, just helpful. So another way to automate is, like I said, the installer hook is nice because you can, uh, you can upload your build right away to the installer or to test flight. But still, you have to remember the full command. Like you're typing ti build minus p ios. Uh, minus t, disk ad hoc, minus p, and then your provisioning profile ID, etc. etc. So um, I'm lazy, so I don't want to remember all these commands. So I made a, a CLI for, um, for the Titanium CLI that allows you to use recipes. Um, and there are built in recipes for all sorts of options. So instead of doing minus p iOS, you can just use the iOS. Um, recipe and it will do that for you, but also if there's some of that there, like iPad, iPhone, and it's also very, all that is very simple. Um, you can create very complex recipes in that way. You can build a recipe um, that will just do the full build for an installer and just save it as a recipe like you call it install or anything. Save that as a, as a local recipe in your project folder. And then whenever you are in that project folder with the CLI, you can do TI installer, and it will do, it will execute the actual um, commands that are uh, a result of that recipe. So you don't have to remember the full command. And uh, the, the hook will display the actual outcome of the recipes that you use. And you can go through a list of all the recipes and by the colors you can tell the building recipes, local project recipes or global recipes. And like you can see it includes the provisioning profile IDs um, that you use for that project. So whenever I want to uh, do a build I can just run it and we'll do it. So it saves a lot of keystrokes and remembering all the commands that you have to enter. Um, one other uh, task that you often run into is generating all the 
uh, icons and launch images and uh, retina, triple retina, API images, etc. etc. So um, I made another tool for that, which is available both um, as a website where you can just select some uh, assets, an icon, um, an image for your splash screens, and then select some options, some of the targets that you want to use. And it will generate a zip file with all the icons and the launch images in the right uh, density. And, and you can just copy over the contents of that file and merge it with the project. And it will have all the icons and even Google Play and iTunes Connect access there. But, uh, but I really can recommend to not use the web version anymore because it's way behind on how it developed the icons. There's also a CLI version which you can use. Um, which for Android, for example, generates nine patch splash screen, so there's way less um, assets in your app. And uh, it also it also can generate not only icons and launch images, but also image assets for your project. So you can have just put the uh, triple uh, the Retina HD images in your iPhone images folder and run the iPhone's assets and it will automatically see, check your TM and XML for all your tar target platforms and generate all the other image assets for it. So it will generate uh, the normal Retina images, it will generate um, the, uh, the non-Retina images, all the different Android densities. So generating a new, or adding a new image and then you just run the command once, you will have all the different densities that you need. I'm just lazy. <laughs> so another nice tool that I ran into last week was Alloy Smelter. Um, actually, I, I think most of the features of Alloy Smelter need to, need to be brought into the Alloy uh, Core CLI because there are some really uh, common sense uh, commands out in there that, that are really useful. Um, like you can you can just do uh, smelter generate just like you can do alloy generate, but then have an extra option uh, to point to a template. So you can have your home directory or whatever. You can have a set of templates for different um, projects. You can just select one of those templates, and it will generate that model view controller using that template. And you can also copy, move, and then remove a controller. So when you have want to remove a controller. Now you have to remove the controller, um, the view, and the TSS file. This will do it all at once. But you can rename it, just save some work. And it has another building features like you can do a build without doing the Alloy compile by simply taking out the plugin for the TF and XML and inserting it back in after the build, which is useful when you want to. Uh, what I often do is when I run into issues, and I check out the resources folder for the Alloy compiled version, and I see, ah, oh, wait a minute, maybe if I do this and this change, and I, I want to do the change just in the generated resources folder. But of course, when I run, and when I do a new build, it will remove the resources folder and generate a new one. That's not what I want. So using this, you can just skip that and just run the app without doing the Alloy build. So and to be clear on this, you're saying you're, you're still editing your Alloy code, but you're not regenerating the resources directory? Is yeah. That, you, you solved the major problem, thank you. Continue <laughs> uh, another something that I think should be part of TI Clean, uh, whenever you run TI Clean, it does clean a lot, but it doesn't remove your resources folder. And every now and then you, you run into these issues where there's something wrong in the element of file. And it just it, stay, it sticks around there because the, uh, earlier the Alloy compile really just removed the resources folder and generated a new one. But nowadays it, it wants to be faster by leaving there when it was already there and trying to very intelligently remove the files that it doesn't need and update the other files that are new. But sometimes errors happen in that phase. So. Um, when you do a TI clean, that often solves most of the titanium issues that can happen after a while, but it doesn't solve the alloy compile issues. So I, my suggestion would have to TI clean to also remove the resources folder when it's an alloy project. But this command, this um, CLI, does exactly that. 
Um, so there's some very useful uh, additions to the alloy CUI. Uh, also an alloy, an, one of the alloy commands is um, uh, the internationalization, which allows you to extract strings from your alloy project and insert them into your strings and XML files. Um, but there are some limitations to the internationalization uh, feature of the alloy command. It only extracts certain strings. It doesn't extract, like for example, um, if you're using title ID or text ID uh, instead of L, it, it, there, there will not be extracted. So um, using this CLI, you cannot just only um, extract all of the strings, including text ID, L, and other um, and, and, uh, um, translation strings that you have in your XML files, in your TSS files, they're all extracted. But you can also merge string files. So if you have uh, a string.xml file that you send to a translator and you get it back, but in the meanwhile you have made new additions, you can just merge these files and it will show you exactly what changes it's going to make and then you can apply them. So for me, I mean, what I notice is that obviously Accelerator as a US-based company is not primarily focused on international apps, but uh, for me, working with Dutch clients, um, this is very helpful for me to be able to quickly um, take their translations and their changes, merge them back in, compare them, and move forward. So like for example here, this is a tool that you can use to, um, to provide a web interface for translators to make changes. Now you can just merge, it will say what change will be made, and it can apply. Um, so, Studio is terrible and CLI is great, right? Well, that's not, that's not totally true. I still use um, Studio every now and then because CLI does have some downsides. And one of them is partly solved by Tiny, um, but not when you have to execute multiple commands. So if I want to, like for example, first clean a project and then make a build that I want to distribute to installer, um, I still have to remember or do all of this. I have to create a recipe or whatever. Um, and every time I have to execute those commands and change them and do different actions. So obviously you should be using Grunt instead of it. And there are some great Grunt uh, plugins that you can use to interact with Alloy Titanium. Um, there are tickets on Jira requesting for Alloy and Titanium to be real um, common JS modules because it would be nice to just require titanium and then be able to um, to have the build method and whatever. That would save a lot of trouble. But at least these um, these uh, plugins for Grunt allow you to uh, to use it in your uh, in your tool chain and just immediately um, do alloy start alloy compiles, uh, create projects in titanium or do builds and whatever you need to do. And TI Shadow is saying you can just uh, uh, use the ground plugin to start TI Shadow and execute um, some specs and run some tests. So one of the stuff, uh, so an example of what you can do with this um, is this file that I'm going to show you. Let's say, for example, I want to have an easy way to um, get a, to do a, some kind of simple continuous integration um, for a titanium project. So I'm done with my changes and I want to upload a new version to my testers, to my client. So I want to increment the version in TF.xml. I need to clean the project, um, build it for iOS, build it for Android, upload the installer, um, both of the versions. Um, so that's all I need to do. So if you're using Grunt, So you can, you, know, you can chain different tasks. You can, who has to be using Grunt? Okay, go use Grunt. Grunt is a, 
it's a task run basically. Um, you use a configuration file in your project uh, where you import um, plugins that export tasks um, that you can just give options for and it will execute the task using those options. But you can also uh, register new custom tasks in the configuration file. So this example uses both of that. Um, let's just scroll down. You can see I do some um, initial configuration, some settings. Um, when I will call this run, I can uh, use an option notes to give some release notes that the installer will receive. Of course, I have my token and provision profile. And then I use the Titanium Grunt plugin to clean the project. Then to build for iOS using a distribution name, the provisioning profile ID that I uh, set at the beginning, the Android build. And then there's another plugin for run the uh, shell that you execute shell commands. So in this case, I'm using the uh, installer API um, to send the IPA I just built to installer at the release notes and tell them to notify the testers. And then um, do the same for the Android version. So here I load the run titanium and run shell plugins. And as you can see, I'm also registering uh, a custom task which uses uh, Tony's tf.xml module to interact with the tf.xml file without actually writing xml. I take the current version, I simply increment the last part of the version, I tell the module to write the tf.xml file again, and I um, show the current version on the, in the console. And then lastly, I registered the full task and I tell it to run all of the TF, that TF task, which is now simply incrementing the version, all of the titanium task, which is cleaning the project, building for iOS, building for Android, and then running the shell task, which is uploading for iOS and then uploading Android. And you can chain different tasks and register different task names. So if I'm now in my project directory, I can use grunt, I can just um, type grunt, hit enter, and we'll do all of these default task. But you can also have a task for just doing the iOS build or just the Android build. And I could do like run Android, run iOS. So it, it helps you to really go way beyond those simple tiny recipes that you could write. You can make very complex um, automation. You can even just like, there are Git um, contribution. Uh, there are Git plugins for Grunt. So you can do a, a commit of all your code as it is at that moment, add a tag with the same version, and push that as well. So you, you, can, you can be as creative as you, as you want. Well, the, the, the end result, I'm trying to eventually make Tri-Titanium work with Alloy, so you can 
do alloy code in the browser, and then it compiles all in the browser. And I think Smelter is a big part of that, that puzzle. So I'm trying to figure out if I have to run that, uh, if, if it's possible to run that in the browser, or if I'm still going to require a server compliance. I wouldn't know. Yeah, so that's going to require some research. Doesn't like that close to making it happen. <laughs> and then, then yeah. Um, Oh, so yeah, actually, there's one other question. I mean, please, don't let me monopolize. If anyone has questions, please ask. Um, I mean, this is, like, probably the, the second or third best. Actually, it's probably the best technology developer internationally. He's, like, right up there. Uh, in some areas, he even blow, blows me away. Um, Good. Best so of rare <laughs> <laughs> um, Yeah, this, this guy is, is amazing. Um, and for him to say this, like, you can't oversell him.